Hi and welcome to another episode of Essential Lightroom. In this video, I'm going to take you through step by step how to create this extreme low key effect in Lightroom. So we're going to take you step by step from the color image right the way through to the final black and white image. So let's take a look at all that right now. Okay, so this is a pretty good candidate for converting to this sort of high key black and white image. Shot on a black background, so we've got a nice darkness in the back, and we've got a really good, strong, well lit image, so we can get some real color and depth and te sort of texture into this. Now, it's a very, very easy process. First thing we're going to do is go into the develop module, go to the basics tab, and switch this over to a black and white image. That just converts it, but it looks pretty flat once you do that. So we need to now go through and make some tweaks and some adjustments. Now the nice thing is when you convert it using this method, we can still have all the control in the B&W or the black and white panel where we can adjust any colors that have been used in this image. So even though you can't see them, you can still edit their relationship to black and white. So as you can see, if we take a look, there's already a black and white mix that's been created for us. And we're going to come in a bit later and we'll take a look at what happens if we start to tweak that. But for now, let's just jump back to the Basics tab. Let's make some adjustments to this image because it kind of looks just a little bit flat. So the quickest and easiest way to start dealing with that is to grab the contrast slider and push that over to the right. So we increase the amount of contrast in there. So we get stronger blacks, lighter whites. So let's give that a sort of a bit of a boost. Somewhere in there looks pretty good. Next thing I want to do is grab the highlights and I want to bump those up. If we drag them down, you'll see the biggest effect is kind of in the skin. As we start to drag those down, we get this kind of weird effect to the skin. It starts to pull a lot of the detail out. What I want to do is push it the opposite way. So we kind of blow out the skin. So we're going to take that to about plus 30. So you can see the effect is a little bit more interesting. The face now suddenly starts to come into a little bit more detail. And that kind of just gives it a bit sort of more menacing kind of look to it. Next up, let's grab those shadows and just give those a bit of a kick as well. Probably around with the same kind of value, about the plus 30 mark should be pretty good for that. That brings a bit more detail out now in the jacket, so we don't lose that. Keep the black in the background. Next up, we're going to jump over to the whites, and we're going to give those a bit of a boost as well. Now, we've been careful not to blow things out. If we take a look at the histogram at the top, on the right-hand side and the left-hand side, you can see we can see exactly where the black points are, and we can see where the light points are. If we want to double-check to make sure we're not blowing anything out, we can simply hold the Alt key down on the keyboard, and as you can see, as I drag this around, anything that goes white is now being blown out. So we can control that, but in certain instances where we're looking at this, different points like the hand and so on, it's not too much of a problem if we start to lose a little bit, we clip a little bit of those highlights. There's nothing much to worry about on there. They're just tiny little details like the highlights, specular highlights on the zip. So not to worry about that, but it's a good little tip if you want to check, just hold the Alt key down, use any of these sliders with the highlights, shadows, whites and blacks, and you can see exactly what's being blown out or being lost. So, pretty cool. Let's zoom back out on there, and we'll do the same with the blacks. Now we're going to drop the blacks down, round about this kind of point. That looks pretty good. Again, if I want to, I can hold the Alt key down, I can use this and we can see exactly what's being affected by our adjustments. So there we go. So we've already got a much more interesting looking image. We've gone from that sort of boring kind of color image, which is quite flat, to a much more interesting black and white image. So we're nearly there. We're nearly getting close to where we want. Next thing we want to do is grab the clarity and give that a bit of a boost as well, just to sort of really pick out the detail in the textures of the skin and the jacket and so on. We're kind of looking for that stylized effect. We're not really worried too much about making this realistic. There's a couple of things that you kind of notice on here. Once we start to do that, we get some little problems like little flecks of dust and so on on the actual clothing, which I sort of suggest you go in and just use the spot removal. And what we can do is we can just quickly go in and adjust and edit those out. I'd spend a lot of time doing this kind of thing to make sure that all these little sort of distractions are gone. But you kind of see what we can do. It's very, very sim simple to make these adjustments, make these alterations. So we'll click on done on there. And we'll just pretend we've done all those. But you can see the difference when we remove those little sort of specular highlights. It just helps draw your attention away from those problems. So, again, we've got these little dots, little highlights. They just kind of grab your attention and take it away from the image itself. Now, you could spend a lot of time doing this. And obviously, if you do this commercially, you probably would spend a lot of time doing it. But there we go. That'll do for the moment. 
So you can see, let's go rid of some of those annoying little highlights that we had on there. Okay, so next up, let's move on now to the tone curve and start making some adjustments in there to get a really cool effect. Now for me, out of all the tools you've got available in Lightroom, I've got to be honest, the tone curve is probably my favorite. It just gives you such a versatile method to make tonal and color adjustments to your image. Got plenty of videos that show you how to use this, specifically ones that'll show you how to use the color channels to make some really cool effects. And just check out the channel, and take a look at some of the things we've got on there. Tons and tons of videos that all use the tone curve. For now, for this video, for this particular image, we're gonna keep this really, really simple. We're gonna add a couple of points into it making sure that we are in the linear point curve mode so we can just add these points in and directly adjust things. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this sort of shadow area, we're gonna pull that down a little bit just to sort of make the clothing dip into the background a little bit. If I show you before and I show you after, quite subtle, but it does make a difference. Next up, we're gonna to go to our highlights and we're gonna drag that up a little bit. We kinda of wanna get so real sort of strong highlights in the face, making sure that you don't blow things out. If you do, you can always go back in and make some adjustments in the basic panel. And we're gonna just crush the whites down just ever so slightly. All right about there, looks pretty good. So let's take a look at before, take a look at after. So you can see we're starting to get a sort of semi-posterized effect. And if you find, like I say, any of this is too much, you can easily adjust and compensate. Okay, so we've done the tone curve, we've done the basics panel. Let's take a look at the B&W, the black and white color mix. Now, like I said at the top of this video, this allows you to customize and tweak the actual colors in the underlying image. So if we just take a look at before, we can see the colors in the image. Okay, we don't have a lot, we just have skin tones, but we've also got the ability to adjust those. So if we wanted to make changes, we could do that quite easily. Now we can either control this via using the actual sliders themselves. So if we grab the orange slider, for example, you can see the beard. If I zoom in a little bit, you'll see a bit better. So if I adjust this, you can see the beard gets darker or lighter, the same as the hair. So we can tweak that. The yellows, you can see not making quite so much of a difference. Try the reds, you can see that now starts to affect the skin colors. Take a look at the shadows around the nose, around the eyes and so on. So you can see if you want to sort of lift some of those shadows, you can sort of bring that over to the right hand side. If you want to dip those down and make them stronger, you can take them to the left hand side. The alternative method is to use this direct editing tool, which we can just click on, and then we can come to anywhere on the image, and even though we're working in black and white, it will still affect that color mix. So if we use the shadow by the side of the nose as the example, we click and drag that. If you take a look on the right hand side, you'll see now in the black and white mix, the red slider is the one that's been affected. There's an ever so slight amount of magenta, probably one or two points in total being adjusted on there. But these are the kind of shades and the colors that are affecting the overall image. So this is a great way of going in and directly influencing anything in the image that you want to adjust. So the same, like you say, if you go for the beard, you can see that now adjusts the red and the orange mix. So we can adjust that and tweak it and so on. So pretty cool the way you can do that. And like I say, you can use either method and you can adjust any of the colors in the underlying image. Great when you're working with skies or grass and foliage and so on. Really, really cool way of working. Like I say, for us, we're gonna leave that pretty much as it is there. Okay, so we're pretty much done with this image. There's one more thing I want to do. And that's we're gonna come up to the graduated filter. So we can press M on the keyboard or we can use the actual slider itself. What we're going to do is we're just going to simply darken the bottom of this image off. I want to kind of trail off to blackness. So we're just going to go to about this point, drag this up, holding the shift key on the keyboard to constrain. And once we've done that, you can see nothing happens because everything is set to zero. So everything is set to parity. What we're going to do is we're going to drag the exposure down. And you can see once we start to do that, the bottom of our image starts to go into blackness. And there we go. So you can see, unfortunately, the zip itself is still sort of showing up. And if we move this around, you can see we can adjust not only the position of this, but also the length of the actual graduation itself. So that's pretty, pretty cool. Okay, so let's click on done. So that now makes it much more interesting when it kind of dips to darkness in the bottom of the image. Okay, so how can we get rid of this zip at the bottom? Well, it's pretty easy. Let's just zoom into that. Let's just scroll up a little bit. A couple of things we could do. What we could do is we could go back to our graduated filter and let's just zoom out a second. And with the graduated filter tool selected, you can see we've got the little node which we can click on and we can reactivate that uh, graduated filter. So what we could do is we could do something along the lines of grab the highlights, drop those down, grab the whites, drop those down. And you can see that does deal with most of it, but not all of it. 
So let's click on done. So next up, just to get rid of that last little bit, we can come back up to the spot removal tool again, and we can just simply come over and paint over it. Making sure that we've got a good source point, and you can see by doing that, we we'll click on done, that's pretty much gone. So pretty easy to deal with, and various different methods we can use to deal with different kinds of problems. And like I say, that's pretty much it. So we started with this. As you can see, it's okay, but there's no real drama to it. And we've ended up with this, which is a much more high key, much more dramatic image. Great if you're doing something with Instagram or you want to sort of take this over to a poster into Photoshop or into InDesign, something like that, where you can start adding some text and some textures and a load of other things. Well, that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to cover in this video to show you how to create that high key black and white image in Lightroom. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback, pop those in the comments section below. Until next time, take care.